I'm joined here in the studio by Dr. Alex Jet Hientz from the University of Salford's Business School. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Um, so could, in layman's terms, could you just explain a little bit about Digital Agenda um, and its purposes for me? That's right. I mean, as you have uh, discussed uh, earlier today, you can see there's quite a lot of developments that are happening, such as mobile phones. So you've got uh, retailers that are understanding making profits or potentially moving into the new a economy and uh, just yesterday it was announced that uh, Morrisons are trying to join in the online revolution and try and get to the target audience of theirs, i.e. customers who really don't want to have uh, the inconvenience of going to a store and buying things from there. And uh, overall over the last five years uh, you've had about 680 billion pounds that has been around the world that's been in some way uh, associated with the digital agenda. So the idea is that people are purchasing online, they're making their comments and sharing their sort of views about products and services and helping companies to innovate their products in one way or another. So the European Union realized that that's a, a major uh, uh, potential for Europe, uh, which is uh, the largest uh, sort of GDP-wise uh, 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 sort of body for innovation and commerce and uh, what they've tried to do is to see how they could uh, help us all to break down the barriers that we have with the reg regulatory issues such as different legal aspects, uh, technological uh, uh, troubles that we might have, so incompatibility of things that you might have. And uh, they set out the 2020 Agenda for Europe and the idea is very simple that we all within the European Union at least try and have a common set of uh, game to the rules that we could play to. For example, will your comments on social media be used against you or could they be used against you to dismiss you as an employer and, and uh, issues like that. And you find that across Europe there are different interpretations of each one of those factors and uh, Digital Agenda Europe is uh, a seven stage sort of process that hopefully provides us with the technology, provides us with legislation and also understanding of skills and uh, needs for the business. Okay, um, so h how is Digital Agenda helping the UK in its cur current climate? Right, well, as uh, uh, you mentioned before, Tesco was one of the main innovators in embracing the digital agenda and the online shopping revolution. I think it was one of the world's leading uh, online retailers out there. And uh, essentially, we as consumers benefited uh, from this immensely by being able to uh, get what, it, what we want, when we want, and perhaps not necessarily trying to comply to the needs of the uh, organizations that is trying to sell us the products or services. So Digital Agenda is putting UK consumers much more in the forefront of the uh, business and uh, hopefully makes us more innovative and more convenient. So if you think about stores like Blockbusters and HMV, who haven't necessarily been able to provide or catch up with the needs of the customers and the consequences are unfortunate for them, but uh, nevertheless, you see the digital agenda is helping new uh, companies to emerge and uh, you know we become much more mobile and uh, as a customer you are far more convenient uh, in, in terms of how you want to purchase your next product or your next iPhone or iPad or whatever you might be interested in rather than you were before. Okay. And could you tell me a little bit about your current project that you're doing? Yes, uh, one of the projects that we've been looking at uh, is linked to this digital agenda and the idea is we're trying to understand how does the European Union, or uh, in the current 27 stage, uh, yeah, well, current 27 uh, countries, or the uh, five countries that will be joining us, uh, the European Union, uh, very shortly, uh, what is the difference in terms of their attitude to business culture? For example, very basic things uh, for somebody to import or export uh, abroad would require you to understand how you communicate, what are the uh, attitudes to business meetings which social media networks you would use to establish the connection and uh, how you would potentially get uh, students from a different country to come to yourselves and uh, uh, offer them a placement opportunity for work experience. So our uh, project is based on the understanding that uh, we are now increasingly living in a borderless uh, world where the internet is breaking down the barriers and communication is really sort of opened up amongst all of us. However, there are cultural differences that are still ingrained in, in how we've uh, been sort of brought up. And uh, for example, very basic things such as attitude to meeting times. If you are in one country and you say you have to meet at 10 o'clock, the person would be there at 10 o'clock. But in other business cultures, if the meeting is scheduled to be at 10 o'clock, you might uh, uh, attend the meeting at half past 10, and that is considered to be a normal business mm -hmm. practice. So uh, little cultural issues like this will make us uh, hopefully more aware 
if a business wanted to export abroad, uh, that they will be able to see how that knowledge will be able to shape their business relationships. So the project that we have been working on for the last one and a half years researched different attitudes to this and one of the key areas that we looked at was the attitude to social media. And uh, one of the uh, exciting things that we found was that uh, despite of all the differences that countries have in terms of uh, how we use social media in one country or another, the younger generation, i.e. students, uh, are finding that there is really no cultural barriers there. So the social network actually shapes the way that we behave and the shapes how we are as consumers interacting on a particular network. So if you, for example, go on TripAdvisor and leave a review of a certain uh, hotel you visited, that review will be almost internationally understood as being a review for somebody else, and that information will be used by other consumers to make their decision. Okay, so um, yeah. obviously we're here for comic relief. So, so in your opinion, you know, do people have the money um, to support charities? Well, social media is a brilliant vehicle for comic relief and other charities. And um, I think Obama's uh, campaign for, their, uh, for his election was one of the, the first campaign that he ran, was the first testament to social media in terms of raising money. So one of the things that is certainly uh, uh, proven uh, right, that uh, if you have a million people donating, say, one pound, it is much more powerful than uh, 10 people donating 10,000 pounds. And that's not necessarily... Uh, great for uh, those people who are having difficulties financially, but uh, the understanding that if you were to donate a small amount, however small it is, you are still making a big difference because if everybody does that, you have a great opportunity to make a bigger impact for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you.